Hi friends. Today I'm here with my fifth grade beginning brass class and we are going to talk about reading the grand staff. Now the grand staff, I usually talk about reading on the staff with both the treble and the bass class. If you hear me say the word staff, I'm referring to the five lines that we draw all of our symbols to read music. This refers to how long we play a note, which is side to side horizontal reading and how high and how low the notes are and those are the vertical plane here. So the staff is the five lines that we write our notes on and those four spaces in between. You'll notice that I drew two of them because this is called the grand staff. There's going to be a treble clef up here for our higher pitched instruments. These are the flute, clarinet, trumpet, uh, any of your upper, well, basically most woodwinds, and your trumpets, your French horns, and most percussion instruments are gonna be up here on the treble clef, these higher notes. And we'll show, show you how to draw those symbols shortly. And then down here on this bottom one is gonna be the bass clef. That's gonna be the low bros and bro dets. That's my baritones, my trombones, my tubas, the timpani. All those lower bass instruments are gonna be way down here. And we'll show you how to draw that symbol. Now, oftentimes in band, we're not going to see both of these, but in my class, students read both clefs. So we're gonna learn them both today. And those of you who are in my class today, I want you to focus really hard on the one that is your instrument. So again, we have brass class. Everybody in my class is either a trumpet, a trombone or a baritone player. The trumpet players are all gonna read on the treble clef up here. The baritones and the trombones, you guys are gonna read down here. So it's gonna be really important that you pay attention to that one, whichever one is for your instrument, but it's good for you to be able to read, at least identify pitches on all of them. So let's start by drawing. And so we're just gonna draw some pictures here and I want you to try to draw both clefs. It's pretty simple pretty easy. I think we can all do that. So step one, we're going to draw a bunch of treble clefs, and the treble clef is a scary one. It's kind of hard, but it's not that bad if you break it up into steps. So I'm going to start by just drawing a straight line. Go ahead and follow along and try to follow these steps. Step one is that straight vertical line. Step two, I'm going to start at the top, and I'm going to draw kind of a squished half circle that goes about halfway. So you got kind of like a little flag there. Now, and it has to go to the right side too. Now we're gonna continue from where we left off and we're gonna draw almost a complete circle but a little swirl. So that's most of a treble clef. Now I'm gonna try to do all of that in one, one movement. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and I am going to draw one straight line up. Now I'm gonna go to the right for my little half circle. And then I'm gonna to go to my left for my swirl. Okay, bonus, I'm gonna add one more thing. The bottom of the treble clef has a little hook on it like that. So let's try one more time. And when I say one more time, usually I mean like five more times, just so you know. So we're gonna do a little hook at the bottom and draw a straight line. And if some of you need a little break at that point, just to be able to look at that and say, I can do that, that's fine. Let's start back at the top and do that little smooshy half circle. Okay, and now we do the swirl continuing off in this direction. That is a treble clef. Let's try to do it in one swoop. I'm gonna go slow and I'll talk you through it. Start at the hook at the bottom, straight line up to the top, half circle to the right is next. Keep going to the left, think like cinnamon roll. Okay, I want you to practice a few of those on your own. I'm gonna walk through it, but if you just wanna continue practicing those, that's okay. So hook, line, half circle loop, swoosh. I usually say a hook, a line, a loop, and a swoosh. Hook, a line, a loop, and a swoosh. Now, if your treble clefs don't look perfect, like maybe you, you did like, something like that and you're like, I can't do this. It's, it's okay if you can't draw them perfectly right now. I promise the more you practice them, it gets better. Um, 
having said that, the most important part is that you can differentiate between them. You can look at it and you say, I know that that symbol is a treble clef. Most of the time you're gonna be looking at a textbook and you'll be identifying that. But at some point, I would like my students to be able to draw them too. I'm gonna to make it harder in a minute, but not just yet. Let's try some bass clefs. Bass clefs, I usually don't get too, too picky. Um, we're gonna do basically kind of like a like half of a heart and then two little dots that start, that are right close to where that little hook is. That's a bass clef. Bass clefs are a lot easier than treble clefs. Let's try that again. Little hook, kind of like half of a heart, and then two little dots. These two dots are gonna be very important because they're gonna show something on the staff. And the other thing about the treble clef, this little swoosh, is also going to be very important because it shows you something on the staff and that makes a treble clef a treble clef and a bass clef a bass clef so let's just practice a couple more of these little half heart two dots half heart two dots make sure that you don't do them backwards that's not a bass clef and backwards not a treble clef okay one more thing I want you to know about each of these clefs before we try to put them on the staff. A treble clef has a nickname. It's called a G clef. And a clef is just a symbol that de designates a note on the staff. So it makes it so we know where those notes are on the staff. A bass clef is called an F clef. That is gonna be an important thing that you need to know. I make sure my students know that every year because it shows you how to read the notes. And if you only know where F is on the bass clef, you can read every note on the staff if you have to. Same thing with the, the treble clef. If you know that a treble clef is a G clef and it shows you where G is, you can figure everything else out, just at least note identification wise. So let's go step three, back up to this grand staff and we're gonna to try to draw some of these clefs on the staff. Okay, so remember, uh, let's start on the top. I drew one of these, a couple of staffs. You may uh, wanna take your pencil, your pen, and trace some of the lines on your paper a little bit darker. I did it with just a purple pen just because it was easier and it makes it pop a little bit more. Um, you probably don't want to just try to pick five lines on your paper and draw with it because I think you'll probably make a mistake or it won't be really obvious. So at the very least, I would take your lined paper and draw a little bit thicker lines, make them a little bit more clear. Um, you can also go to, there's a bunch of free sheet, sheet music websites that will print off free sheet music. So you can go to, I believe it's blanksheetmusic.net. You can print off as much empty staff paper with nothing on it as you possibly can. Just go nuts. Um, but for us, this is what I'm doing with my students just because it's what I have handy here. So I'm gonna start here at the bottom and we're just gonna draw treble clefts around the staff. What I'm gonna do is below the staff, I'm gonna try to make it so you can see me as best as possible. I'm gonna do my little hook and I'm gonna go all the way up to the top. Can you do that for me? Little hook at the bottom and then the line goes up to the top line. The next step is going to be going to the right we are gonna draw at that same spot where we left off our little like smooshy half circle. That's our loop. And then the swirl has to go around this second line. So bottom line, second line. I start where I left off and the swirl has to go around there. Remember when I called it a G clef? That's because this guy shows me that a note that is being split by the second line is a G. Okay. I have one question from my classroom. Jules, what's your question? Why do you have to go all the way at the top? Why can't you just do it in the middle? So Jules asked, why, can't, why do you have to go all the way at the top? Why can't you just draw it in the middle? Do you mean like this? Yeah. So that's actually, I just answered that part. It's this, this clef is called a G clef. So this swirl right here where it goes like this, shows you where G is on the staff. That's what this whole symbol is about. It is to show you where a note is on the staff. So when I do my line or my hook, my, my hook, my line, my loop, and my swoosh, usually I stop right there. But what it's showing you, that swoosh stops right here. And if you imagine just circling and circling and circling, it's showing you that a note here is a G. 
So that's what that symbol is all about, is it's showing you where G is. So it's really important that it's placed right here. This is not a treble clef. This is technically inaccurate for what we would be using in band class. Okay, and it takes a little bit of time. If you can't draw them perfectly right now, that's okay. We'll forgive you, just keep practicing. Is that good, Jules? Yes, thank you. Okay, good question, really good question. So let's try drawing just a couple more on the staff. I bet we can get three more over here on this side. So I'm gonna do my little hook at the bottom. We're gonna go all the way to the top. And then I usually stop right here in the middle. Don't go past about halfway through the staff. Go to the right and then the swoosh. Let's do it again. This time I'm not gonna stop in the middle. Hook, line, loop, swoosh. And if your treble clefts kind of look like this to start with, if you're like, you know what? That's still accurate. That looks a little silly and it needs some practice, but it's accurate because that swirl is where it's supposed to be. I'm okay with that. So let's do one more. A line, or oh, sorry, my hook, my line, my loop, and my swoosh. Again, if, if this is difficult for you to draw right now, it is totally okay. It's kind of a weird looking symbol and that's all right, but you need to understand what it means and what it tells you. So now let's try some bass clefts. These are really easy. So I'm gonna start on the left side. I'm gonna do my little half heart symbol. Notice that I went up to the top and to the bottom. So I stayed in the upper half here. And then those two dots have to be on this second line. They have to be on each side of the second line from the top. And the reason why is because remember this one is called an F clef. Those two dots show me where F is on the base clef. So we know that these two dots show us this note, and I'm just using a circle to symbolize it. Later on, we'll call it a whole note, but for now, it's just, it's a circle. It's fine. It's showing us where S is. This note right here, this pitch is an F. It's not down here, it's up here. This F. Let's try practicing just a couple more. Face clefts are a lot easier, okay? Little half heart, two dots. Half heart, two dots. Way easier, much easier. Okay, so my class, do any of you have questions about treble or bass class? You can put a cue in the chat. Give it just a second. Assuming we have no questions, we're going to, oh, we got a couple. <laughs> Addie, question. Are we going to be using smart music for band since my brother uses it? Um, yes, we will be using smart music. Can we keep our questions just to reading music just for today? Because we're going to remember we're going to share this class, this lesson with other classes. Katie, is this about um, reading music? Yeah. Okay. What's your question? Why is the um? Why is the uh, one that we just did called F? Um, this one is called an F clef because the two dots show us where F is on the staff. So each one of these lines signifies a pitch, how high or how low we play. And if, on the trombone, this is going to be how where our slide goes. And if it's a baritone, it's which valve combinations we use. So this tells us how high the note is going to be, and it could be any of these pitches. I just kind of stacked a bunch of notes on top of each other like that. You can only play one at a time on baritone. Um, well, in beginning band anyway. <laughs> these two dots show that this symbol right here is an F. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's always like that. So this note on bass clef, it's always going to be an F. Now something really important to notice, on the treble clef, you see that this second line right here is G. On the bass clef down here, this is not a G. These clefs are read differently. And likewise, this note right here is F on the, on the bass clef. This note up here that looks the same is not an F on the treble clef. So I don't want you to freak out about that too much. Let me explain how to read those and then we'll We'll focus on the one that we're studying and we'll get better at the other one later on, okay? All right, I'm gonna move on to what it looks like to read them on the staff. 
so that we can start practicing that. So I'm going to start with treble clef and I'm going to go through this kind of quickly because we're running short on time with our class. So I'm going to just draw a treble clef. If you're good at it, go ahead and draw one on your own. If not, that's okay and just pay attention to the lesson. So I drew my treble clef. There are two different ways to approach this. You can either try to read all of the notes on the staff or you can use something called an acronym. And I'm going to start with an acronym. So all of the line notes, this corresponds to a fingering combination on your instrument, which buttons um, or valves you're going to push down. So on the, if we know that this note right here is G, because we have a G clef, it's swirling right here, this note is G, the notes that are around it are related to that G. Oh, it's another important, important part of uh, piece of information. Um, in band, we use the letters A through G, and then when we get to G, we start back over at A again. So the band alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You get the point. Only A through G. There's no H through Z. It doesn't count. They don't exist in this. And that's why? Because they've been doing it that way for hundreds of years and it's worked. Okay? So the letters A through G exist on this. Knowing that this note is G, if we, I'm going to save part of that. Let's use our acronym first. Um, I have it written down, down here. If I am a treble class reader, I usually say every good boy deserves fudge for the line notes. And some people, piano teachers may have taught every good boy does fine. That's accurate as well. And the spaces spell the word faith. So what I mean is when you see this is good, the bottom one is every, the middle one is boy, this one is does or deserves, this is fine or fudge. And again, these correspond to which buttons you push on your instrument. The space notes, and this is a symbol that goes in between the lines, spell out the word face. F, A, C, and E. So I think it's really easy when we're just beginning to use an acronym and then say, is this a line note? Or is this a space note? And I look at if it's being split by a line, then it's a line note. And I use this acronym starting at the bottom. Every good boy deserves fudge. If it's a space note, if there's lines on each side of it, then it uses, F starting at the bottom, F-A-C-E, spells the word face. I'm going to show the bass clef really quick for kids. And then I'm going to show you really quick what it looks like as just using all the letters on each clef. I got to go kind of quickly. Bass clef, we know that this note is F. I'm going to do the other notes on the lines. And then our space notes over here. So again, space notes are in between the lines. Line notes have a line that is splitting the circle. Bass clef readers, and these are my trombone, baritone, and tuba players, and when you get into percussion, those says timpani drums are also on the bass clef. Bass clef, for the spaces, I use the acronym all, cows, eat, grass. And for the line notes, good boys deserve fudge always. Sometimes I'll say good burritos don't fall apart, whatever you prefer. Um, Let's use the burrito one just so it's different than the other. So this is good, starting on the bottom line. Burritos don't fall apart. And spaces start in the bottom space between these two lines. All cows eat grass. So again, this class is read differently than this class. You don't need to necessarily understand all of them perfectly, but you need to understand that there's a difference between the two. Now, the next thing I want to show you, I'm going to do this with treble class, 
because most of my students are treble clef readers, I'll demonstrate it with bass clef after. Treble clef, every line and every space accounts for a pitch. There's nothing in between them for now. So if I start at the bottom, and I know that the bottom note is E, the next pitch up higher is going to be that space note. The next one is G. Now a space. We got to G, we start back over in the alphabet A. Middle line is B. Next space is C. Next line is D. Space is E, line is F. So sometimes some kids it's easier to visualize this way than it is with an acronym this way. Every line and every space counts for something on the staff. So if you know that this note right here is always going to be G because it has that clef showing you that, that second line is always G, then go forward in the alphabet, when you go up on the, st on the staff and go backward in the alphabet when you go down on the staff. G, if I go down, it goes backwards in the alphabet. Before G is F, before F is E. When I get to G, up means I go forward in the alphabet, I have to start over. Next line is A, next note up is B, C, D. The same thing happens here on the bass class. If we know that this is G, then up is forward on the alphabet. We start over. A, up again. B, up again. What comes after B? C. What comes after C? D. And it continues that pattern. When you get to G, you just start over with A. Now, I understand if this seems like a lot of information right now, this is this may be something completely new to you. And if that's the case, that is okay. I highly recommend that you get on some trainers and the more you practice, the more it's going to get easier. I'm going to stop the share now and I'm gonna answer some questions for my students. Those of you who are listening in for beginningbandbootcamp.com, I encourage you to continue to practice and use some trainers and reach out to your teacher when you have questions. It's normal if this is something that's challenging. I wish you the best of luck in your practicing. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to stop sharing. What questions 